In this chapter we're going to take a look at another field bus, Modbus TCP. Setting up a Modbus master and slave works a little bit different than how we just did the Profinet network. The Modbus master can be created by adding a hardware module. This module doesn't physically exist though. On the other hand, the Modbus slave is a software application. In this chapter we will focus on setting up the slave side. So first up, we need to add some variables on the slave. So put any program with a few SVIs on the slave CPU if you don't have any yet. In my case, I added this application in there. Now after we do that, we need to add a file to our, uh, to our slave module. So we go to our file explorer, then we open our remote side, and we go to the slave side, and we go to the boot device that we're working on. We right click on that, we go new, and we go file, and give it a name. So in this case, I'll call it modbusconfig.csv and click OK. Now that that is done, we're going to add the actual application to the device. So go to your slave, go to software, then applications, go right click, new, and then software module. Then in the catalog, you can see this modbus.m file. We click next. Make sure to turn on load and run immediately to start the application. And then we go down to uh, mappings. Then here you see mapping file. We turn this on. Then we click on the symbol here on the right. Open up our flash zero and select our CSV file that we've just created. Now, as you can see, we added it here and we're done here. In this Modbus tab, you can see the protocol. It is Modbus TCP. Of course, you can do RTU, but for this episode, we're going to keep it on Modbus TCP. Then we press finish. And I'd always recommend you to press override here, especially the first time, because then you make sure that your application has the newest version running on the CPU. Now, double click on the Modbus application and go to the mapping tab that you see here on the top. On the right side, we can add a variable. And as you can see, there are three columns that we need to fill in. The first one is what kind of variable we're going to use. This can either be a coil, a disk, an IREG, or an ADREG. Second is the index. This is the address of that uh, variable. Then last but not least is the actual variable we want to send over that uh, index. So first we're going to send a coil. So we can keep it on coil. The first index isn't used yet, so we can keep it at zero. Then we double click on the dots and we're going to select a coil variable. So in my case, I will use this Boolean value. Now that the first one is done, we can add two more. Or one more. As you can see, we can now select it and we are going to add a holding register. Now, a coil and holding register can both start at index zero because um, uh, they have their own range. We click on this again and we're going to select a integer. Now, as you can see here, a double int has a length of four. Um, so, an index takes up a uh, two length spaces. So if we would say would use this double integer of length four, it would mean that if we add another holding register, it would take up two indexes. So this index would start at two instead of one. So we're going to add another variable there. And this is going to be this one. Now that we've added three different variables on our slave side, we are done here. We're clicking save. And next up, we're going to look, take a look at how to add the master side 